guys, it's Mr. Sanders. Um, I wanted to try a new technique uh, using our Mimeo system that the school has um, in annotating a couple of videos about cellular respiration. Um, this video is mainly going to be about um, the Krebs cycle, which is um, the second major stage in cellular respiration, so Krebs cycle. So you'll already notice that we have created at this point from glycolysis pyruvic acid molecules. So pyruvic acid is again the final product of glycolysis because in glycolysis you converted glucose into two pyruvic acids. And so that pyruvic acid still has energy inside of it and so we want to get the rest of the energy out of that in the Krebs cycle. So again use we're going to start off with one pyruvic acid molecule from glycolysis and that pyruvic acid molecule is going to enter the mitochondrion. So again this entire thing is the mitochondrion. Um, we're going to let pyruvic acid inside and again this is pyruvic acid as well. Um, and so what we're going to do with this pyruvic acid is we're first going to change it and manipulate it so that it becomes acetyl-CoA. So step number one, or I should say goal number one for glycolysis will be to convert pyruvic acid into acetyl-CoA. And so that is this portion. So going from pyruvic acid all the way down to acetyl-CoA. Um, and so that is goal number one. And along the way what you're going to do is you're going to take NAD plus and NAD plus is going to gather two electrons and a hydrogen ion and convert it into NADH. And we'll remember from class that the, this NADH goes off to another part of cellular respiration called the electron transport chain. And so already we've sort of stored some energy in the form of NADH that we're going to use later on in an electron transport chain. So the energy is these two energized electrons. And also what we're going to do, notice that this is three carbons, so one, two, three, this pyruvic acid. However, this is only two carbons, so one, two. And so what we're going to have to do is remove a CO2 molecule. And as we know from our overall equation, that CO2 is indeed a product of cellular respiration and this is where that product comes from is the Krebs cycle. So you remember the overall equation uh, just so that we can refer back to it is 6O2 plus C6H12O6 gives you 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. And so from this process, we are definitely getting out our CO2 product right here. Okay? And so this 
is again the product. So now that we've done all of that, we've created our NADH, we've removed our CO2. Now we're left with a two carbon molecule. Um, and this two carbon molecule is then going to um, have a CoA attached to it. Now this CoA is simply like a recognition molecule. So all it's going to do is make sure that this uh, two carbon molecule is able to match up with this four carbon molecule. Okay? And in class we named this oxaloacetate. Um, but you don't have to worry about that name. That's not so important. But this CoA will allow for these two to come together. So it's simply for recognition. And once these two come together, then you are able to create our six carbon citric acid. So you have two carbons plus four carbons will give you a six carbon citric acid. And so we'll write over here, goal number two is to combine a four carbon molecule with a six carbon up oh, sorry not with a six carbon <clears throat> with a two carbon molecule called acetyl CoA. And so this is referring to this step. Okay? So combining acetyl CoA, the two carbon molecule, with the four carbon molecule here to create citric acid. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So goal number one, again to, um, to combine pyruvic acid, um, I mean to convert pyruvic acid into this acetyl-CoA. Goal number two, combine acetyl-CoA with this four carbon molecule here to create a six carbon molecule um, called citric acid. Okay? So already we've done a lot of steps so far um, that sort of will run into the Krebs cycle here. So from there, let me just erase the screen. So we will actually take citric acid, the citric acid that we created, and we will extract energy. So that's goal number three, is energy extraction. So energy extraction in the form of NADH, FADH2, and ATP. Okay. So you can see at all the different stages of where we get energy extraction. So for NADH, we have energy extraction at these steps, including the one that we had before and over here. So all of those are for NADH and then for FADH2. FADH2 is way over here. And our ATP is over here at this step. And so remember that ATP we can immediately use for um, other processes in the body. Um, this is um, 
a great product that we can di directly use. Um, however, we're going to take, again, all of these NADHs and the FADH2, and we're going to send them to the electron transport chain. And so all of these are to the electron transport chain. And, and so when we send those to the electron transport chain, we're going to end up getting a lot more ATP out. So we're going to use these to generate ATP in the electron transport chain. So now that you know the goals, so all three goals, and you know exactly where our NADH is coming from and our FADH2, that we produce a little ATP. Let's sort of sum up this process. So for one pyruvic uh, 